Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Yankee Center podcast, and we are here to actually have some fun this time. We have some news in Yankees land for the first time this offseason. DJ LeMayu is back. Corey Kluber is in pinstripes, all in a span of 24 hours. What the hell? Guys, I am so excited right now. It's, oh, what a day, man. What a day yesterday. How are you guys feeling? Uh, it was, uh, it was quite a day, man. It was like, it was like, what, what's going on here? It was like, you know, we spent months having nothing. And now that now in the span of 24 hours, we've got, uh, Corey Kluber and DJ LeMahieu all back, all back we got. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm so like, I'm just. It was it was just an overwhelming day, okay? It was like in the span of like twenty four hours, we did more than we've done in three months. No offense to Greg Allen, okay, but this this was, yesterday was a good day. Let's just say that. Uh, and what what do we do now? I don't know. Man, what do you think, Eddie? I agree. Um, we needed this very very badly. Uh, it's January. <laughs> what's January 16th now? I don't even know. But um, mm-hmm. what I do know is that it's been three months since the Yankees were eliminated from the playoffs. And in that three months, the biggest move we got was Greg Allen and Ulysses Chessine. We hey, Chessine sure about was DJ. pretty exciting. That was exciting. But, I mean, I would have been happy with just DJ for the day. But when you have two important signings in one day, it brought a little bit of life back into me. It brought, like, some baseball oh, excitement. Oh, totally. Because it's been a little boring. Besides for the Mets, we needed to get in on the action a little bit. So I'm happy. Yeah, that definitely puts a little bit of pep in your step. And now, like Tom was saying, the question is, where do you go from here? And But before we even get to that, we got to say what these moves mean. Because there's a lot of implications that come from this. You know, DJ, when, they, when he signed um, six-year, $90 million DR, all of our initial reactions were... What a steal. I mean, you're getting one of the best players in baseball, $15 million per year. That's just a $3 million raise from what he was getting the last two years. So, you know, for the Yankees, that's a super team friendly deal. And it made you think, you know, clearly this is about the luxury tax. However, when they go out and sign Corey Kluber for what apparently is $11 million guaranteed, it makes you now I'm not quite as sure what the plan is because I went from thinking, oh, yeah, it's all about the luxury tax to maybe they go over because right now they're just five million dollars under it. I think some projections even say they're like right there. So, man, it, it makes you really think about what they're doing. Yeah, it's the money thing is interesting. It's like nobody actually knows how much money we have left. And like uh, that, that seems to be important information. At the time, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we could we could definitely use like the actual number right now, uh, you know, including the Kluber and DJ deal. I can't I can't believe DJ signed for only fifteen million a year. That's you just, know that just tells me more about the total dollar number than um, the an- average annual value because I think it was more like he wanted to get one hundred ten, and then yeah, he's were going seventy. Then they wanted to meet in the middle around 90. And I think it was more like 590, but then they were like, could we just throw an extra year on? And I think he yeah. agreed to it because, just, you know, at that point, it's like, it's pretty easy to talk him into it because you, you can tell him we can get more players that way to help you win a championship. You're going to, you can retire a Yankee. And that's pretty sick to think about. You know, when it's all set and done for DJ, he is going to retire as a Yankee in all likelihood. Yeah, I mean, can't wait to see 40-year-old DJ play baseball for us, huh? Yeah. <laughs> He'll uh, still be back 300. That's, that's definitely what we signed him for. It's the sixth Obviously. year. It's the sixth year that we're waiting for, not the first three. Just, well, yeah, because he's going to help Jason Dominguez win the World Series. Yeah, Jason right. Dominguez, Rookie of the Year. You like how Joe DiMaggio helped Mickey Mantle win in 1951. Uh, there you Joe, go. Joe DiMaggio's last year was Mickey Mantle's first year. They didn't like each other too much. No, they did not. <laughs> Rumor has it that Mickey Mantle shot Joe DiMaggio in the head. No, that's, that's not true. 
<laughs> that's not true. Um, Eddie, what do you think about this? I mean, yeah. you know, we've always been talking about the luxury tax, and and I know you've been um always saying like we have, you know, it's bullshit. But um, it what do you bullshit. think the Yankees are gonna do? I mean, uh, as you guys said, the six years it made sense. It was like okay, you. DJ gets more total money. The Blue Jays offered him 478, which is more year. But in the end, he's got two more years in his contract, so he'll probably never have to hit free agency again. He's going to make more total dollars. So that made sense for him and from the Yankees' perspective from wanting to likely stay under the tax, which that thought lasted about 12 more hours once I saw Kluber sign for $11 million, And I'm like, okay, well, this can't be it. I mean, there has to be something else. This, you can't just say, okay, good offseason. You know? There has to be another move. I mean, you're under the luxury tax now. Now you basically have no choice. But – to go over unless yeah. they trade Adebino somehow and then maybe add another, how much would that put them under? Like 14 I would or say 15 if they, million under? It depends. Like if they were able to get a team to eat all of Adebino's money, which they probably can't, but let's say they do mm-hmm. hypothetically, they're probably like 14, 15 under. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that would be, you know, be great. Yeah. I'm just, we got to see. Again, we haven't really had an idea of what they're doing besides DJ for, Along this off season, all we heard was okay, they'll sign DJ and then they'll pivot to whatever, and they pivoted very quickly. It took about yeah. all of like ten and hours then, for them to make a new move. I think that's why they, I think that's why they got and, it done so quickly. The DJ deal, I think that's why they got it done. They're like, oh, totally. Yeah. I bet yeah. they have a lot of deals in the works that have been in the works, and it's kind of just been like, you know, we're interested, but we can't really get this thing going until we know what's happening with DJ. And now that that's resolved, I feel like he's just calling all these different teams he's already talked to, and he's trying to pick things up. Like, hey, can we do this? Can we do this? And then now, whatever deals he has, I think they're going to come very quick. I think I think we see another deal in the next week, honestly. Bring I do. Bring me Luis Castillo. Don't bring, say that, Tom. That bring make, that would make him too- to me. Don't, don't say that. Bring him to me. And I'm, I'm also annoyed because there's a a bullshit report about him out right now because you know Jim Jim Bowden he was saying um that the Yankees did have talks with the Reds about Castillo but Hector Gomez um this uh, reporter from the DR is saying oh they're in talks but no it's he said he said that they had talks and they haven't picked them up in a while so for anyone that very may have different. seen that that is false yes that's a very different thing Cashman literally inquires on every single player. So that could literally mean absolutely nothing. It could mean oh, something, right. it, but it easily could be nothing. Unload the farm cash. Unload it. Give me give me Luis Castillo. Can you imagine? Uh, just, Garrett, just Garrett give me Cole. Joe Musgrove, man. That's all I need. I'm, I'm, not, my I'm goal, a simple man. My goal in life I'm is a simple to have, man. My goal in life is to have a rotation of Cole and the Luises. Okay, Cole, Severino, <laughs> Medina, Gill, Medina too, and Castillo. Gil. Okay. Okay, you know I what? Like that. That'd be pretty lit. <laughs> Cole and the Luis is like pretty so, awesome. Like Snow White White Cole and too, the Seven Dwarves, Luis. or like uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Cole and the Four Luises. <laughs> Boom. I need it. Yeah, I like that. Can we make that a thing? Yeah, calling the Luises. We gotta start telling people about that. But we should trademark it. That, that's our thing. That's I just came up with it, man. I came up with it yesterday. I'm a genius. Okay, we just need we just need to acquire one Luis without giving up any of our Luises. Or if we do that's trade about, a Luis, we have up. to sign another Luis to replace the other Luis that we traded for Luis. That's a lot of Luises going on. Yes, you need to get acquire two Luises if you're gonna get rid of one Luis. But if you get what if we got a Luis? You only need to acquire one Luis. We're one Luis away from having four Luises. Why not a Lewis? Doesn't have the same flair. What if we give it the same? Is there a pitcher named Lewis? That'd be really funny. Is there? I don't know, but. Not that I know of, but it would just be funny if we had Garrett Cole, all Luises, and then you just had the one Lewis who feels really left out. Like that'd be pretty funny. Cole and the Luises. I want our uh, it, I want our six and seven starters to be named Luis as well. Just no, I think six and seven should be Lewis. That would be perfect because they're left out intentionally. 
that'd mm. be good. Mm. Uh, well, this this conversation flew off the handle. Uh, but yeah, so like, should we talk about the luxury tax? Because like, well, I mean, we kind of already have. It's just that for me, the luxury tax is really gonna end up determining whether or not. I like the Corey Kluber signing. And that's me being very blunt because I didn't think he should have got that much. I don't, especially in guaranteed money, rather. I don't think we needed to give him that much money. But with that said, mm. if we're going over, over the luxury tax, why the hell should I care? It's not my money. Like, I, I just don't care. But if they truly care that much about going under, then I think this could really handcuff the Yankees. And And honestly, even if we make other moves... I think it's still going to handcuff us at the deadline where even if we need a pitcher and Kluber gets hurt, we're not going to be able to make a move, which sucks. We will never so, trade for a pitcher at the deadline. Luis I know. Marino <laughs> is our trade deadline acquisition. That's what Cashman That is says. exactly he what Cash is say. Boom. He loves he to say he that. He says it too, and he loves saying that it's with every single worst. injured guy. It's a deadline <laughs> acquisition. We haven't made a trade deadline acquisition since, what, 2018? Um, it's been two years. Well, remember, we might we have did, made something small. We, we did, did we nothing, do anything in 2019? We, no, did, we did nothing, nothing in 2019. Oh, no. we, uh, yeah. we did nothing 2018 in 2020. was what? That was Jay Happ and Zach Britton. Oh, mm-hmm. right. that was, that, that was actually fun. Okay, not Happ. I don't like Happ. It, I didn't like well, Happ was good that year. He was decent. Yeah, aside from, aside he was not good against the Red Sox. Yeah. No, Which is but the regular season, he was freaking crazy good, actually. like He had like a under two ERA with us. That was fun. That we was got fun. Lance Lynn, too. Lance Lynn, who we should have kept. Oh, he was that same year. Yes, you're right. Was that when we I remember when that trade went down. Too? 2017, yep. 2017 was... Uh, Sonny Gray, baby. Sonny Gray and Jaime Garcia. Yeah. And you yep. can't forget about the legendary White Sox trade. Todd Frazier, uh, David Tom Robertson. Yeah, David Robertson. yeah they're all gone yep. now. Yep. Yeah. So we sad. need Todd back. No, no. no I, give me David Robertson back. I will give me him back. I want him back because he's cheap, so I don't care. Yeah, but he won't give the coaches playoff shares. I don't care. Just get, get oh, me right. David Robertson. I forgot about that. <laughs> I don't forget. Uh, he doesn't like so, when you throw him in pools. Ha. Huh. Boom. So... Yeah. Really, just going through the options that the Yankees have left in terms of the uh, market, I don't think that whatever pitcher they get next, assuming they get another one, I definitely don't think it's going to be a free agent. I, I'm pretty no. confident in that trade. I mean, no, I think we made our free I mean, agent. Who's, who's even out there anymore? Bowers, obviously, There's not, not happening. Unless you want to bring Tanaka the, back, that's, that's not going to happen. happen. That's not going to happen anymore. And I like Tanaka. Corey Kluber got 11. Our seven-year run has ended. Yeah, yeah. no. Like, if Corey Kluber is getting 11, Tanaka shouldn't Tanaka's be asking any more. less than 15. Like, we're just being honest. Like, he w- he deserves that, but we can't give him that, unfortunately. So, I, w- I would agree. This is the end of Tanaka. And I'm not going to say it's the end of Gardner because he can t- he might sign very, very cheap. He honestly. always he's, finds he's... his way back. <laughs> every time. Every time. Every time you think that he might be, be going, he stays. He's just not going What anywhere. if like, we just don't even sign him? Or at least we think we don't. And then we get into spring training, and he just walks into camp, and Cashman's there, and he's like, yo, what can we do? Rick Gardner <laughs> like, signed a minor league like, deal with the Yankees. Yeah. That's, yes. that's, like, he would probably sign for like the veterans minimum. He would sign a minor league deal and still manage to play 100 games in the major league level. Every time. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's every, yeah, every year. I'm starting to think like he's like maybe he'll be curse. 50 years old and we'll pull him out of the stands. Maybe yeah. he's the reason. Yeah. He's maybe he's maybe, maybe he's the reason why Stanton and Hicks and Judge are always hurt. Maybe he's just like a curse that because he needs because because he needs the playing time. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why Clint forgot how to play defense for a few years. Maybe that. Maybe, it all makes sense, man. You know, maybe maybe that's why Mike Talkman forgot how to hit a fastball. Just Brett I still think he's going to have a bounce back here. Mike Talkman? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, there's no way he's that bad. Come on now. He's not that bad. That's not 
To me, there's that's no not way realistic. he right. is that bad. But there is a good chance he is bad. I think he's yeah, somewhere he in between. Just been a fluke season. I don't know, man. I think he's a decent hitter. I could be wrong, but I do. I think he might be a 700 OPS guy at least. Yeah, I mm. think he can be that. I mean, and, and for a backup outfielder that has great defense, I mean, that's more than enough, obviously. For a fourth outfielder that plays gold, 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 I can't. Speak. That's great. Gold, gold glove defense. That's fine. But mm. just, yeah, just, I mean, just really great out. He couldn't hit a fastball. His bat looks so. And slow. that's my thing. It was just the fastball, which tells, and and that wasn't the only guy that had that issue last year. So, no. I my gut tells me that it was just a product of the weird season. And next year he's gonna be not necessarily an all star, obviously, but I think he's gonna be a lot better than what we saw. So, so he'll be at least serviceable. So that would be really too, great which to helps. See. Oh, that's very helpful. I mean, and he's not just an okay center fielder. He's a great. He's, he's a great center fielder. He's yeah, a he's great. A good he's outfielder. great in every outfield position. Sign him so, to an extension. No. <laughs> nah, that was a joke. That was a joke. Just trying so to help. Really, trying trying to be his agent. You know. I don't know. The Yankees are really gonna make me think right now because I this off season is looking much better now, of course, but I could end up hating it still. I could still end up being very annoyed with this off season. Correct. I hope I'm not, but like if they, let's say they just stopped here. It, yeah. That's, it, that, re, that, that, shit, one, be that one, that one sit right with me. Cause like, it's very clear. We need another reliever at least. Of and course. But like, and we, and it's, it's very, it's very, 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 uh, it would be very helpful if they got a starting pitcher who doesn't have major health concerns. That would and be that's cool. my be thing. Great. A veteran. I, like, I, yeah. Ideally, we'd get a number two, like we've been saying, but I don't Louis need a number Castillo. two. Like, yes, I know, I know, Tom. But if you get me a number three and he's actually like a workhorse, that's I'll more than it. fine for me. Like, I I'll gladly take, take that, like, especially because like, I, I was saying this on Twitter yesterday. I think the Yankees are betting on one of their guys breaking out. And I think mm. that's very reasonable when you consider yeah. the fact that they have Severino, you know, Corey Kluber. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> Clark Schmidt and Davey Garcia. Right. If one of those four guys gives it their all and gets reaches their potential, then you're looking at a frontline starter, probably. And you pair that with Cole, and then suddenly you already have a top two, and you just need a three and a four that are solid. And I think they already have guys that could easily be solid threes and fours. I mean, Montgomery already is a solid four. So mm. I think that they're just going to look for a number three at least. And if they can do better, they'll consider. But I wouldn't be shocked if they go with someone that we might consider a little underwhelming, but... Musgrove is my guy still, and I think he's very possible. I really do. If Castillo is too pricey, I'll say, for Brian Cashman, uh, which happens quite a bit, uh, Musgrove's a, a good backup. I, I would take Musgrove, especially with those so would, would you give up Clark Schmidt or Davey Garcia for Joe Musgrove? Uh, for me, it's uh, tough. It's very tough. That's tough. Part of me says yes. Part of me says no. Like, because, like, (sighs) Musgrove's like 27, 28. But the metrics are great. But he's he's also, like, in terms of results, they haven't been the best. It's like the the Pirates again with their history of pitching. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Not been the Pirates. The greatest. I, lean, I mean, look at Gare Cole. If I'm, if I'm going to give up my top pitching prospects, I would prefer to go with someone, to, to use those chips for someone who has a longer history of success. Just, I would give me say... Name, it, if if you give Matt me Blake, like a name, I could put like, yeah. Like, I, I would say trust Matt Blake in this case. Let him look at all the numbers and everything, and I think he'll be able to give you a better idea of whether or not he's worth it because it's really just down to the scouting department because if they see 
This guy has a lot of untapped potential, and he's already looking really good when you're looking at the metrics. And he can take this to the next level, then yeah, if you really think he can, I'd, I'd be okay with giving up one of those guys. But it just all depends, really. You know, they they know more than me, or at least I'd hope so. So, and just looking at the numbers, man, he is. It's a lot of red on a stat cast file, man. It's a lot of red. You just look at exit velocity. He's near the top. He's 93rd percentile. Hard hit percent is 79th. E- expected slugging is 88th. His fastball spin is high. His whiff percentage is high. I mean, the guy has like a 12 strikeouts per nine innings rate. So the guy has great stuff. There's no denying it. It's just he only he's only had one truly successful season, and that one successful season was in a COVID-shortened season. So. It's tough to judge. It's very tough to judge. Ask you guys this quickly. What do you guys think yeah. about James Natalia? He's got uh, injury I, concerns, or else I would, I, he, I would be in. I like him, but he, for me, he'd be the flyer guy. And to me, yeah. Kluber is like half of a flyer guy already. So no, Kl- I wouldn't. Kluber is the flyer guy. Like he's half of a flyer. He's a flyer guy, but I think they're counting on him a decent amount. I could be wrong, okay. but I think they are really putting a lot of stock into him. I don't think they're I mean, giving him 10 to 11 million mm-hmm. just because he's a flyer. Right. Mm. I was just looking. He had a good 2018 season, which was I, and then had Tommy John surgery. I think he only pitched like six or seven games yeah, in 2019. He's, good, so he's, I mean, he's really good when he's healthy, but he's just right. I mean, historically, he hasn't been healthy. He's one of those pitchers that that he's like Paxson. He's hurt a lot, so it's just mm-hmm. I would prefer to go for someone who you know st- pitches. Uh, preferably, you know, that's just yeah, like, yeah. That's that point. seems, that seems to be a preference of mine that Brian Cashman doesn't share. Um, uh, just like a pitcher that can stay on, stay on the field would be wonderful. Uh, considering See? the fact that Severino, you don't know what he's going to be when he gets back and you don't even know if he's going to come back because one setback, it screws everything up right. and, you know. So, and Kluber, well, the same thing. He just came back from a pretty, pretty bad injury. I mean, but, like, I mean, and he also... Well, John he Boy also, actually gave him What was Kluber's... Yeah, what was Kluber's injury again? I don't even remember, to be honest. It was, it was um, like a weird... It was like a terrace, terrace muscle tear. I don't even know what that muscle is, to be honest. It's in uh, your shoulder. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. And shoulder, How do you look at that, that throwing? Funny. Yes, he did that throw. Yes. Oh, okay. He pitched right. one inning for the Rangers, and he tore oh, okay. now it during I that inning. That, right? Yes. He actually had a good inning that inning. He actually looked like the old Kluber. <laughs> he had a good inning. <laughs> yeah. He did have a good inning. We should look he, forward to that inning. He, he struck a guy out, I believe, too. But, yeah, it just something went. So, uh, 15 and, pitchers have had it. In 2019, he broke his forearm. Yeah, 15. Yeah, 15. Yeah, that's they a all come back short. They yeah, it's, all come back strong. Yes, it's not like a yeah. debilitating injury. The 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 question is is right. like he hasn't pitched in two years and he's like thirty four, about to be thirty five. So it's like he's going to be thirty five when the season starts. So it's like age isn't on his side, and also he hasn't pitched in two years, and it's just like with Severino. Severino hasn't pitched in two years either, but he's like twenty seven. He's about of to course be it's different with him. Yes, so he's but, got time. Um, to, yeah. I'd say the one thing that is good, though, this isn't a guy that's ever relied on velocity, really. Like, ever. Even when he was good, he right. was topping out usually. Not topping out, but he'd be 92, 93 at most usually. Occasionally get higher, but not often. Right now, it's January, and he's hitting, like, 90, 91 tops. And that's not even spring training yet, like or regular season. So, actually, that's pretty good. Like, that's encouraging. I probably added so a I would say, to that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. If you add a tick, tick or two to that and you're in the regular season, then that's right around where he was before his big injury happened. So that's naturally yep. not bad at all. And as long as the off-speed stuff checks out and his command is good, which supposedly he looked really great in his showcase, then um, he might be exactly what we need. So, you know, I, I have a decent amount of confidence. I'm not going to get overly optimistic because you, you just never know, but... If I'll feel much better about the deal if we get one more reliable arm. If we get one more, then I totally am in love with the Corey Kluber deal. Like, I love it to death. I agree. I think if you get, like, 
Say we do get Luis Castillo. I'm just gonna. Oh, I'm just gonna that, use, deal, that deal becomes amazing. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna like, use Luis. Beyond. I'm just crazy. Yeah. He's making 4.2 million this year, Luis Castillo. Cashman so likes th- that. He's cheap and he's good. He's just expensive mm-hmm. prospect wise. But, but uh, you know, you get what Cole Kluber. I mean Cole, Castillo, Sebi, Kluber as your playoff rotation. I mean, just just come on, give give me that, give me that. I want that. Uh, I'm, I mean, you know, eleven so million. Go up against Didi in the playoffs. <laughs> Cooper pitches. Eleven million is a little pricey for uh, half a flyer. But, it is. You know, but you know, it is. The the upside is legitimate. You know, there is legitimate upside there. If he, like you're saying, he was throwing. Pretty, pretty, pretty hard for, you know, a guy coming off of a shoulder injury who isn't even in spring training mode yet. So, I mean, if he adds a few ticks. So, he's like, from what I read, he was like 88 to 91, I believe I read. Yes. So, like, <laughs> if say, say he goes up to about, for the, for the season, say he's about 90 to 93, with that movement on his pitches, with his control, he should be able to be... Uh, a good pitcher. I will. I. I don't. As, I. I'm confident. I would. I would say I'm confident. As long as he doesn't get hurt again. I, of course. I'm confident he'll be good. That. That's what. I'm yeah. Saying. Me too. If he's healthy, I. I wouldn't have any concerns either. You know, is yes. he going to be at the Cy Young pitcher? I'm Probably not going to say yes because it's tough to expect that out of any 35 year old. But um, if he's a guy that has an ERA in the low to mid threes, which I think he easily can do still. I would take then, that. Yeah, I think you're you're thrilled. You're totally thrilled, and that's especially, and especially for 11 since million? he's. Oh yeah, and they got to keep in mind too, this, uh, as an experienced bulldog pitcher that's been through the postseason. I mean, this is a guy you'd want on the mound in the postseason if he's healthy. So, I am pretty excited about seeing him, and I think it'll work out for us. I really do, but we'll have to wait and see. Again. Whatever they do next will determine how I feel. But um, yeah, the DJ move though, that's one I don't think there should be any controversy on. You know, yeah, there, I don't think there we've have really been some gotten people... into this one. No, because some people have said you know, six years is too much, but it's it's really not. It, no. At that price, it's not. <laughs> like million? fifteen million a year. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, I mean, it's only a three million dollar raise from what he got. He was getting in his original <laughs> contract. Good. So like, come on, that's I, I I understand the length is technically scary, but it it the way they wanted to structure it, you know, fifteen million is going to be much easier to swallow, you know, five five years from now, you know, it's not they 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 did this because they wanted money to spend now instead of money to spend. Four or five, four years from now, if it was going to be like a four-year deal instead of a six-year deal, so they they did it for luxury tax purposes, and it allowed them to sign Corey Kluber. So suck it, suck it. What do you think, Addy? Yeah, I mean, you got to do it. Um, I would first like people. What are we talking about? Some people are saying, oh, it's going to be five one ten, which is. Twenty-two million dollars a year. Like, yeah, that was. Uh, I can't find. That was the starting nine, I believe. Right. Or was yeah, or was that like, section okay. ten? Was that starting no? That nine was starting nine. nine. That was starting yeah, nine. I, I think. Remember. I was freaking out. I was like twenty-two million a year. I was like, like no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's like how can you be opposed to this? You know, I think it works out great for both sides. To be honest. Exactly. Because... DJ gets you his got payday. the years. He gets more guarantee, more total money than even with the Blue Jays. He would have only gotten seventy eight million over four years. He probably doesn't have to hit free agency again. He could probably just retire at that point. You know, it's better to do this and then rather than sign a four year deal and then maybe be thirty six or thirty seven and want to play another year. It's a lot harder to get a contract then than yeah, pretty much no, wrap up free agency totally right. for the rest of your career. He said yeah. no. It- Totally agree. You know, for the Yankees, this is a clear win now move. So I don't really see how mm-hmm. anyone can knock it. And you got to keep in mind too. Um, this is something Michael K was pointing out on, the, on his radio show, and I agree with this. You got to keep in mind how fifteen million dollars is going to age by the time 
he's 37, 38 years old. $15 million is not going to be the same now as it is then. Especially, I mean, come on. Payrolls are only going to keep going up because that's just the reality of sports. It's only going to keep going higher and higher and higher. So $15 million relative to what payrolls will be then, it honestly might be like chunk change, if we're being honest. I mean, payrolls are already going as high as 230, 240, and you bring the tax up again. I mean, by the time we get to then, we'll probably have two CBAs, which could mean two full different um, raises in the luxury tax, possibly. So by then, you're probably looking at maybe, I don't know, 260, 270, maybe. I would at least say that's possible for, like, the highest of the high. So Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it'll age well. I think it'll age well. We're really paying him for the first three years of the contract. As long as he plays like DJ has been playing for the first few years, the contract will be worth it. I'm not really worried about year five, year six. I'm just, we, we, we did it. Like you said, to win now we're trying to win a world series here. We haven't gotten it done. We need a DJ back. He's back on a team friendly deal that allows us to make other moves. It's a win. It's a win for everyone. DJ gets his it's DJ like gets his, win. DJ gets his ninety million. We get money to spend now, because uh, I mean it's not like we didn't don't have money to spend. I mean they, they're billionaires, but you know what I'm trying to say. The luxury tax, they're yes. trying to stay under it. Uh, it's just a win. It's a win for everyone. Who cares? So fifteen million per year. DJ gets ninety million. He's gonna come back, play second base, and rake. Uh, Glaber Torres, we have to get into this. He's the shortstop now. He's the shortstop for the foreseeable yes. future. Yeah. I have to get into this because he was a bad shortstop last year. He was bad. Of course. But of course, he also came into camp out of shape. So that's also a factor I'm going to consider. It is. Yeah. You know, just, just, just be ready for this. I'm willing to wipe the slate clean and forgive. That's what I'll say. I don't. I won't hold oh, it against. Yeah. I won't hold it against them. Sixty game season. I won't even hold uh, the sixty game season against Gary either. I'll just. Whoa. I'll wipe the slate. I'll wipe. <laughs> I'll wipe the I'm slate clean. It's Gary, but I'll <laughs> wipe the slate clean for both of them. Gary. I mean, 2019. Gary hits 34 homers. 2019. Glaber hits 37 homers. Let's just wipe the slate clean, and let's just see what they do. I think. I think they're both going to have good years. Glaber and Gary. And which would be great because they were two of the more disappointing players in 2020. But like we said, 60 games, just get in shape, be ready to play, and just be like around average at shortstop. Like we're not asking him to win a Gold Glove here. Just be around average and hit hit a bunch of bombs. That's what Glaber does, and Glaber hits for contact too, which is great. Agree. <sighs> You know, I would have to say I agree. I do agree. I would say that um, with Glaber, I'm not too worried about his bat for sure. I think he's going to bounce back despite an off year. Cause again, like we always say, everybody was off in 2020. Not everybody, but a lot of people were. And um, you just got to acknowledge the talent that's there. And I don't think he's a lazy guy either. I don't think he was at, he was out of shape due to pure laziness. I just think the start and stop nature of this of the season was very damaging to a lot of players' physical conditioning and a lot of different things. So I think that the Yankees are in a pretty good spot right now overall. I just I think if they just put on the finishing moves with another starter and another reliever, even if they don't get another lefty bat, which I, I would love, that's icing on top. That's not something I need. But if they get a reliever and a starter that I'm content with, then I think that the Yankees will go in as the AL favorites. I do. I mean, I think that's a fair thing to say because in the, the AL is not as strong as it was before. Very weak. Yeah. I mean, the Astros and the... Rays were the powerhouses, I'd say, last the last few years. And now, along with us, of course, and now the Rays are not what they were, and the Astros certainly aren't what they were either. So I think here's the Yankees say. have a clear route here. Clear here's route. What I'll, here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I think the Yankees right now are the favorites. I would say they're the favorites. Uh, but, but they're not the we, favorites of the world. Correct. But say we do add... Uh, Luis Castillo, because I'm just going to keep bringing that up. Say we do add a Luis Castillo, I think we could go toe-to-toe with the Dodgers. 
Oh, yes. No, no. He's the kind of guy that would put us right there. Because I think even if we had a Joe Musgrove right now, let's say, and we got a good reliever, I don't think that necessarily puts us with the Dodgers. Could it? Could it end up working out that way? I think it could. If, like, let's say Severino bounces back, if that changes everything entirely, then then I would say we can go toe to toe with them probably. It's just no guarantee. But if you get a Luis Castillo, that's like a bona fide number two. At that point, you know you, you can compete with the Dodgers. Yeah. If it's a Musgrove, I'd say there's a chance though. I'd still say there's a good chance if things play out right. And who knows? For all we know, something could play out wrong in the Dodgers' favor. I mean, not everything is going to go right for them always. I mean, that's just the reality of sports and especially baseball in general. You know, stuff happens. Mm. It's going to be a fun year, man. Uh, I hope so. It is. Yeah. I just end it with World Series, though. It's, it sucks that Severino got the Tommy John because, like, I know. We'd, be, we'd be feeling so good about the rotation if he were healthy and just, you know, the same I mean, old we, w- we might have been saying we won the World Series last year if he was regular Sevy. Let's be honest, like yeah, healthy. I would I would at least say that would be a possibility. We would have went to the World Series, I think. Yeah, just he missing a guy with he was my Cy Young pick. Okay, that's how good that's how good we're talking here. This is a guy that if he's healthy, I he's like a Cy Young waiting to happen, especially especially with like Kluber and Cole on his side now. I mean. I can't wait to get him back this year, but yeah. I'm, I'm more excited yeah. for 2022 Sebi with, you know, fully back from the Tommy John and just ready to go full off season. Um, well, I'm not really looking towards that right now. Like I'm all in on 2021 Sebi still. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I agree. He'll probably be even better in 2022, but. I think he can still be what we need in 2021. He won't be yeah. perfect. I don't think. Yeah. He'll but be rusty, even, but I think he'll be, even okay. if he's like, 80 percent of what severino should be that's still that's still a number two i mean really if you're 100 percent of what severino is that's number one like there's like he was a number one quality guy there's no mm-hmm. there's, i don't think you can really deny that if he's you know 80 percent of what he was 75 that's still a number two i'd say so i think we can definitely be what we need and if he is, I think we're going to be right there with the Dodgers, man. We'll be right there with them. And that would be awesome because I am as hungry as I could possibly be for a championship, man. I think we all are. 11 years yeah. has been too long. Yeah. I think I got to the point where, like, I'm just not even thinking about, like, when people talk about trades and, like, oh, we have to trade this prospect. I'm like, dude, I don't even care. We need to we need to win at some point. Like, I'm tired of it. I just, like, I lose my, um, my rationale because I just – I just want to win. It's too long. Like, no, you're 2017, right. 2017, I was just like, you know what? We're winning soon. And then we have it again. Never this happens. is a huge year. This is a huge, huge, huge year. If yep. we don't win this year, then that this is a huge issue. This I is. would say if we win this year, it really changes the scope of what's going to happen next because we have Definitely. a lot of guys that could leave and the pay, and who knows what the next CBA is going to entail. It, I, I, 2022, when we eventually get there, Things could be very, very different in terms of the sport and the Yankees in general. So, mm. I agree. 2021 is a big, big year for us. Absolutely. I mean, you've got – this is Gary's last shot. Judge is playing for his contract extension, right? Uh, Glaber's got to fix his defense, okay? Yep. So, and, and Stanton has to prove he's healthy, and Severino has to get back. Those are those are like the key players that were supposed to take us to multiple championships. I remember remember Brian Cashman when we were building up this young core. He said, "I want to win championships, not champ, no, just one championship." Well, in order to win championships, you have to win one championship. We yep. have not done that. We have not done that. And they it's haven't even won an AL championship yet. So. Yeah, Gary's literally playing for his Yankee, his Yankee future. He's playing for he's his, his MLB career. Yeah, he's not good next year. He's not going to be getting that much money somewhere. I mean, yeah. someone will take a chance on his. He'll stick around, because, but, yeah. but but yeah, like, he's playing for like There's money. A different, if we're talking from 2017, he was looking at a huge contract, especially being a catcher. Now he's looking at uh, not much money at all, unless he proves himself this year again. Of course, he's got the talent, which pisses me off. But I'm not going to. No, I makes it all the more. We talked about it so much. Yeah, yeah. the talent yeah. is what makes it. Pisses it trust me off. off. If we, yeah. if, if if he was like Chris Stewart, we'd be like, oh, we weren't expecting <laughs> yeah. anything from you. I love but Chris like, Stewart. I can this see is him go. 
This is a guy that hit tw- 20 home months. runs. This is a guy that hit 20 home runs in two months. <laughs> you know, so. Should have won the. You can argue he should have won the rookie of the year in 2016 with just two months of play, man, which is nuts. Right. Like, you could really make the argument. That was a fun time. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, um, even in the case of Kluber, I'd say he's in a very similar case where he's playing for the future of his career and more money. So that's what makes me excited about him next year, because, you know, this is a prove it contract. He's going oh, yeah, out there to prove he still has it all. I and forgot he's, Kluber was playing for, for this. Yeah, you know, he absolutely is. There's no denying yeah. that. Cause if he gets hurt again, then he's yeah. going to get even less next year. So I would say this season matters to him more so than anybody on the roster, probably. Hmm. That, that is, I mean, that is, that's a good question. I think Judge has the most to lose, honestly. Yeah, he, I would say if he does get hurt again, that is a really, really bad look for Judge, if, man. I, at like, that point, it's what like, do you even say? Like, no. here's the thing. If he, like, pulls a hammy and misses, like, well, that's two weeks, that's nothing. But if he gets, like, if he has, like, number, an, a two-week if, injury. If he has, like, an abdomen strain that keeps him out, like, a few months, like, he, like he did, or something. If he has, like, a debilitating injury that keeps him out multiple months, a month, a month plus, then... How do you pay the guy? How does he get his contract? Uh, but if he right. does, but if he does stay healthy, if he does play 150 games and plays like we know he can play, then you feel comfortable saying, "All right, you stayed healthy. You showed that you that your injuries were more bad luck than they were injury proneness, and now we can pay you." So he's right. got a lot to win and a lot to lose. Also, go win me a championship, buddy. That that would go a long way. If he gets paid, he gets to be named captain too. So he's got that. To... Oh, totally. I th- I think he would be named captain if he signs a yeah, long term. Yeah, that's that's just what they're waiting on. They're just waiting to see if he can stay healthy, get his contract, then they'll name him captain. And you know, I'm praying he does, man, because I love Aaron Judge as much as anybody. Absolutely. But you also Definitely. just have to be realistic about the situation too. Otherwise, you're just not being smart about it. Got to stay healthy, man. Uh, does anything else you guys want to touch on? Well, actually, I do have one more player that does have a lot to lose, and that's Clint. Because Clint's playing for... This is Clint's opportunity, man. It, it seems well, yeah, like no, he's, he's playing for a lot to lose, if he even plays. <laughs> he's got to show... He's got to show he's that his... Mark. He's got to show that his plate discipline is legit, that his defense and defensive improvements are legit, and he's got to just show his maturity is legit. And he's got to show that Overall, he's just legit because, like, if he is legit, he gets to be the left fielder in the future. I honestly think he is on the market. I have a gut feeling. For certain players, I think he is. Yes, for no, sure. certain players. He's not going to trade Clint for everybody. They're not. For they're him. not actively going out there and saying, "We'll give yeah. you Clint. We'll give you Clint for your sixth reliever here." But uh, I think that they are discussing him in deals for bigger starting pitchers when they're available i do like like i'd deal I him think for castillo for example. for castillo i'd give clint and davy right now and i don't even think twice about that i would yeah. drive clint to the airport unfortunately yeah. i like him what, too now but what, he's... What, what would i be able to hug him yes okay oh. <laughs> yes, sure. just just, ma- just making sure just making sure no. Uh, if tom is going to trade clinton a deal you know it's a good deal because it takes oh, a totally. lot for tom to even offer clint I'm a pitching nerd, man. I just we need that we need that second guy behind Cole because Severino yep. has like if Severino was around, it would be more difficult to include Clint in a Castillo trade. But right now, we I, I want my championship. So yeah, no, they totally. Fail. And you know the I, question is, what would the Reds take? You know, if you offer Clint, Davey, I don't know, Luis Hill, maybe Oswald Peraza, do they consider accepting that kind of package? I mean. I'm not going to say I yes, so. but I'd say they, would they? I think they'd have to think about it. I mean, you're talking potential all-star outfielder with a few years of control. Davey Garcia, who just had a breakout year at the major league level and has a lot of control, and you're getting a young guy with a lot of upside. And if you really want to throw in a major league piece, another one, I'll give you Domingo take, Herman. I don't care. Take Andy Har. Or I, I don't care. Take Andy Har. I mean. I don't care uh, if the, the car can go. We'll, take, we'll get a big car to the airport if we have to. They take can all Tyler go. Wade. I mean, to, it doesn't matter. This one. Tyler Wade, yep. Um, I just don't think if you have, have to take him. 
Cashman never does that, man. He just doesn't. He doesn't like giving doesn't. away a bunch of prospects. He doesn't want to unload the farm for one player. And I get it a little bit, just but because this is like a an important piece to a championship. Come on. Like in for him, I agree. For Castillo, I think if I got to see what the final cost would be. Like if they asked for, let's say both. Uh, let's say they went Clint, Davey, and Clark Schmidt. I'll be like, Ooh. okay, that's, that might be a little much. That might be a little much. Because that be just because that also hurts our our current pitching. I would trade outside. one. Right. I would trade one of Davey or Clark. Exactly. I'd be okay no, I trade one. But I can't I'll trade either. Both. I, don't care. I can't give no. you both. Yeah, because if you trade both, that's not just hurting the future. It kills your depth. Now. So that's that's a major thing I'd say. But um. You know, I would say most people would be on the table for me. Most people, I would say almost everyone is on the table. It's a matter of the combos you put them in, really. Yeah. Yeah. Just get it done, Cash. He's supposed to be Cash God, okay? Yesterday, he did. He was Cash God, I will say. Yes. That was a Cash God day. I knew I knew they were getting Kluber as soon as he I I said him. it on Twitter, too. I said, I think the Kluber deal is going to go down today in the morning. And I was right. That did happen. And it was it was pretty it moved quickly. It was pretty uncoincidental that DJ signed on the arbitration day when they needed when they needed to know exactly how much money they had to spend on yep. Corey Kluber. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. I, I Cashman clearly had this planned and it all lined up. I and you know every reporter has been saying the Yankees all of a sudden like before it was like the Yankees were in on nobody. Now you have multiple rep- reporters being like. Oh yeah, they 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 got some stuff coming up. You know, Bob Clappish is like well, they have to another make move a forty man. Soon. They have to make forty man moves right now. Yep, to and add, I think that might yeah. be the trade that we're looking for. I think that might be where the starting pitcher comes from. The Shit, next trade, one, trade, uh, trade, uh, Clint and uh, Schmidt, and you got two guys off the forty right there. Yeah. Well, trade end part two. For the love of God, I can't see him play defense anymore. <laughs> I can't do it. I just can't do it anymore. I can't. I just can't do it, guys. One, if he, if Andrew Hart plays one game in the field for the New York Yankees in 2021, I don't know what I'll do. I can't <sighs> do it. Well, I'm keep in re- mind, um, uh, this, to start the season, Gio might not be ready if we start on. Oh time. yeah, I keep forgetting that. Because originally uh, we didn't think that was going to come into play because we didn't think we'd even start the season on time. But now, according to exactly Manfred, right. it is going to start on. Time. Yeah, and, and and COVID COVID messed it up because Gio was supposed to get a surgery earlier, but he got COVID. Yep. So so it's yeah. it that's a crappy situation. Gio might miss a couple, a few weeks. So so we get that's that's good. We get to see Endor. Looking forward to it, to be honest. <laughs> looking forward to some. Perfect defense, uh, a very patient approach at the plate too. Even Just joking, awesome. even, even joking like that makes me want to hit you. I, I'd <laughs> almost rather just play Tyler Wade at second and DJ. At I third would rather play Clark. three infielders and five outfielders <laughs> than have Miguel Andujar play third base. Or we could find a way to put Andujar in the outfield too, because we know oh, how good of a defender he showed in, in left field. You know, in Clint that spring was, training game when he caught Clint, a routine fly ball. Clint of course, was great third, out there. Clint was a third baseman in high school, just saying. <sighs> Had to bring it up, guys. Is there anything else you guys want to discuss? Hmm, let me think. Let me think. Uh, there really isn't too much to discuss. I mean, we don't really have any concrete names on who we're in on just yet. Yeah. So, and. No. We've heard nothing really outside of Luis Castillo, basically, and and that was just we yeah. talked to him. And yeah, we're we not talked about him. Instead. We talked about what him. about so what nothing. about Walker last night? Oh, we didn't, well, that was just, that was just a whole debacle. That that was nothing, unfortunately. But what a what a troll, yeah. you know? What a troll. I don't like that. It pissed no, because he was actually trolling. Like it wasn't even like he made a mistake. He was yeah, clearly yeah. trolling. Yep. Like, he literally liked the tweet that said, you know, we're going to the Yankees yeah. from his friend. He changed his profile picture to navy blue. And he said Aaron Hicks, yo, in a tweet. Like, that is as intentional as it gets. And now today his profile pic is purple, so I have no idea what the hell that's supposed Colorado. to be. Colorado? May I guess? Oh, yeah. Uh, fuck out of here. All right. No. I didn't want him anyway. 
I need. I I just. <sighs> nope. Let's let's just move on. Get me Luis Castillo and shut the hell up. That's all I want. Yeah. And Hopefully we, we'll have something soon. If we can get a reliever as well, that'd be lovely. I think I think we'll get a reliever just because there's so many out there. I think Cashman can easily get one cheap. Mm. And I'm not saying we're gonna we're gonna get like a crazy good one, but I think we'll get a decent, reliable MLB reliever. And that's all I need, honestly. Like we already have the big boys. We got Britain. We got Green, Tyler we got Clifford Jeff. reunion. I prefer the David Robertson reunion. Yeah, I'd take that. I mean, I don't even take the Shane Green reunion, but Shane Green got his DD, which was uh, quite a trade. Wasn't yeah. Max Scherzer traded in? No, Max Scherzer was traded. No, in the no Curtis that was Grandison. the Curtis Grandison deal. Yes. Yeah, but that was a three-team deal too with the um, mm-hmm. Diamondbacks. With the same team, Diamondbacks, Tigers. Yeah, yeah like we. Yeah, that's funny. Right. We pulled we pulled off two three-team trades with the same two other two teams. Yeah. yeah. And we lost both of those trades. No, I'm kidding. No, it was a joke. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that's it. I mean, there really yeah. isn't anything else. Uh, yeah. Baseball is back and it's better than ever. Uh, we're getting an on time season, it looks like, too. I can't yeah, say I'm again. upset. I mean, I don't want to wait for baseball. Neither do I. I want it as soon as yeah. possible. So, not complaining. Yeah. We're getting a full yeah, season. Spring training is only a month away. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. and I think Cashman is going to be entirely done with all his work by then. Originally, mm-hmm. I was like, mm. this might DJ might track into freaking spring training, you know. But now, I think that he's going to get everything done by the time we get there. I think I honestly think he might be done in like two to three weeks. Like I think mm. he's all in on the market now that he because now he knows exactly what he's working with. And that was the only thing holding him back. So now he can get busy and finish up whatever he feels he needs to finish up. So we'll probably be back hopefully in a week with some more news. You know, I, I have a feeling we will, but we're going to have to wait and see on that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, that's it. <laughs> yeah, guys, this has been fun as always. We'll be back next week. And this has been another great episode of the Yankee Center podcast. I'll see you, everybody. Peace. See you guys. Peace.